Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome back to another episode of the Relationship School's Smart Couple Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Gaddis, and I am grateful to help you with your relationship life, specifically your long-term relationship life. That looks like marriage, monogamy, or being in partnership for someone for decades. This podcast is all about that conversation. How do we do that well? How do we succeed and thrive and not burn out or deaden ourselves and become complacent and apathetic? So we seek to answer those types of questions here with interviewing lots of relationship teachers, experts, uh, couples, uh, my wife, and many others to get down to the bottom of how do we do this well? Because the quality of a great life is measured by the closest relationships in your life. And the Harvard study suggests that, and I'm here to underline that and say, yes, that's true in my own life. Okay, you can be loaded with lots of money, or you can be the fittest person on the planet, but if your relationship life sucks and you feel stressed when you come home, like you don't even want to be in your own home because that's where your partner is, then you've got problems, right? You're not going to be very fulfilled. So we tackle this here at the Smart Couple Podcast. You know, what's interesting is people talk commonly about divorce rates, right? 50% is the common number thrown around. That's debatable depending on the research you look into, but let's call it 50%. But what's interesting here is no one talks about the 50% of people that stay married, whether they're fulfilled or not. Isn't that interesting? That the assumption is if you don't get a divorce, you're somehow like successful. And what any smart person knows that's, you know, applies common sense is, well, staying married has nothing to do with fulfillment or success. Plenty of people, especially my parents' generation, stayed married, but uh, did it for the kids or because they didn't, uh, their church or religion or someone told them it was bad and wrong to get a divorce. And so they became sexless roommates uh, that just kind of, it was like a business transaction. And that is okay if that's all you want in life. Um, but I want to drill into why this is. Why is it that so many people don't succeed in a long-term relationship? And I want to invite you right now to go to our website and download the relationship test. It's like a little quiz you can take to evaluate how successful your last relationship was if you're single or your current relationship is based on 25 questions. And it's very illuminating. Okay, it's going to tell you, you answer these 25 questions, it's going to take you about 10 minutes. Uh, it's going to tell you what's up with your relationship life very fast. And it's going to tell you where your weak spots are and where your strengths are. All right. So go to relationshipschool.net forward slash relationship test to find out more. Now, how is it that some people have a thriving long-term relationship and others can't figure that out and don't know? Well, I'm going to assert that one of the reasons is because you're not applying yourself, right? Because you didn't get educated on this, it's time to double down and get this part of your life dialed if that's important to you. And you can do that by learning how, like anything, okay? That's all we need to do, guys, is learn how to do it well. Anybody can do it, including you. So the other thing is long-term relationships go through three stages. And then there's a fourth that I'm going to add uh, today just to just for fun, okay? And these three stages of a long-term relationship are critical to understanding your own relationship success and fulfillment, okay? And the first stage is what we all know as the infatuation stage, the honeymoon stage, the feel-good stage, the warm, fuzzy stage, uh, falling in love. It's called a lot of things, but it's that's the first stage, right? We meet someone and we partner with them and we uh, fall in love and all is like amazing. We sort of join. It seems like we're not different. It seems like we're the same. We have the same interests, the same values. And it's really, there's a lot of electricity and chemistry. And the same parts of the brain light up as people addicted to substances and stimulants. So we're kind of on drugs. And 
it feels that way. It feels like a euphoric high and it feels great. That's why we drop everything we're doing <laughs> and we go hang out with this person. We thought we had all these priorities, right? We, our job and all these goals. And then all of a sudden we meet this person and they move to the top of the list and we will cancel things. We'll forget things. We will move our schedule around completely for this person. Whereas a month before we wouldn't have moved for anybody, but now all of a sudden it's like, Oh, you're in my life and this feels good. Hell yeah. Let's move this to the top of the list. Okay. We lose sleep. We write in our journals. We, we work so creative and we, ah, oh, just feels amazing. We write poetry. We do art. We sing. We listen to sappy music that, that invokes these dopamine like feelings even more. And this is awesome guys. Enjoy it while it lasts. And to me, it's nature's trick to get you to reproduce, to keep your DNA alive. So, uh, it's not really meant to last folks. And this is the big letdown that a lot of people have. And certainly that I had in my relationship life, because I would date someone uh, for a little while in this, these kind of feelings. And then I would crash after the sober reality came online that she had needs and she wanted to talk. And, you know, there was like a legitimate conversation to have that was kind of sensitive and a little triggering. I wanted nothing to do with that because I wanted just the good feelings, right? Which is why I was using a lot of drugs in my early adulthood and late adolescence, because I would rather seek pleasure and avoid pain, right? You might be able to relate to that. So the infatuation stage typically lasts a few months to a couple of years at the most. I don't know many people that have lasted longer than a couple of years. And then the sober reality comes in where we start to see the differences. Oh, you, you have how much debt? Oh, you're wearing that again? Oh, you did what in the bathroom? And your laundry looks like this. Is this how you leave your room? And we just start to see all the kind of grossness. And you can't hide, especially if you move in with someone. You just can't hide from the reality that you can't continue to be a half of a person where you're just pre presenting your best self and you're hiding all your baggage because you don't want to be rejected. That just doesn't last. That's a game that you're going to lose at. And this catapults you into, or it's a slow burn into the challenging stage, which is number two. Okay. The second stage of a long-term relationship and the challenging stage, this is where most people, uh, fall asleep or they leave. So when challenges get hard, couples will, will, you know, there's lots of options, but typically they do one of two things. They uh, roll over and compartmentalize all the difficult things and they keep trying to maintain sort of a status quo connection. We're friends, right? You like me, right? And <clears throat> let's not go there. Let's not talk about this. Let's not talk about that. Or people argue and blame and it gets kind of intense. Uh, one person's pulling away, the other person's pursuing, and it becomes this cat and mouse game that doesn't go anywhere. And eventually people burn out there. So Unless and until you learn how to deal with your challenges in your relationship, you won't advance to stage three. So stage two is a maturation process that's cutting your teeth on challenge to see how you can handle interpersonal stress and your own baggage from the past and their baggage from the past and who they actually are versus who you thought you fell in love with. Now you're getting a fuller picture of the real them. So after we move out of the challenging stage, we move into the third stage, which is the true love or mature love stage. And this is, you get to advance to stage three only if you prove yourself in stage two. So people who earn the right to be in what I call mature love, true love, they've worked hard to get that. And if you know someone in your life that's actually there and they're not pretending to be there. It's because they know how to deal with adversity and they, they talk about it and they're willing to be open about their challenges in their partnership. You know, those couples that down the street or in your circle where you're like, gosh, I don't know what they do. They seem always like they're in a good space and they never talk about any challenges. Well, those people are likely wearing a mask and you're being fooled. Okay. They're pulling one over on you. I don't know any couple that doesn't have disagreements, challenges, and whose nervous systems don't fire. Um, so it just happens to me and happens to you and it happens to us. 
and how we navigate those differences are key to moving on to the mature love stage. So once you demonstrate through disconnection after fight, after disagreement, after argument, that you know how to, and you learn how to um, work with those challenges, you move on to an empowered relationship that feels uh, extremely good because you have the feeling of confidence that you guys can make it through challenges together and alone. And you had, had each other's back through the challenging stage. You demonstrated that. It felt mutual. When things got hard, you both put in the work to get through it. And now we're in a mature love stage. And we will, this is the, this is the deal. Don't have the fantasy, guys, that you're going to go back to stage one and everything's going to be hunky-dory now. No. Plan on for the rest of your life having challenges. You've noticed this, right? It, life doesn't typically get easier. The challenges get bigger, especially if you're on the growth path. So would you want to deal with those challenges with a teammate that had your back? Or do you want to continue to frustrate and fail and not how to work out your different not know how to work out your differences with someone? You know, it's pretty straightforward. So in the mature love stage, we absolutely have just as many challenges, but we know how to deal with them now. And we get stronger through the process. And it feels really, really good. Now, the fourth stage is what I call Love 360. This is when you're getting the whole picture and you start to trust a bigger level of life, that life is on your side. Things aren't happening to you. They're happening for you. And this is an indestructible view that you can hold in a really big way that can hold your partnership no matter what the two of you go through, including affairs or uh, disconnection and breaking up that you're holding a much bigger view uh, about life, and it's a way to see the world. And this is more of a state than a trait for most people. Um, it's like a peak experience in a way where you can see all of a sudden in a moment of clarity that it's all helping you. It's all for your benefit. Uh, but usually in our smaller self, we, we tend to get in the victim seat and we think life is out to get us somehow. So in are my more advanced courses, we talk about the Love 360 stage, that it's, it is possible to get stronger there. It's not a place you just hang out in, like some enlightened being. I don't think that's true. It's more of you just get the capacity to hold more contradictory perspectives. You can also hold more of your own drama inside yourself and trust the fullness of it. So we get to do that with our children, our, our partner, and our friends, and the world when we earn the right to step into that. So it's like a, a Vajrayana level of relationship practice, right? So if you want more info on that or any of this, come hang out with us here at the Relationship School. Go take the relationship test and see what your score is. And then one of your first steps is to join this community and get in relationships with other people who are on the growth path, the growth development path, and are willing to talk openly about stage two and not hide that because that's just a reality that you're never going to be able to escape. Okay, So you can join our community if you want. Uh, try it out. Test it out. Check it out for a month. Relationshipschool.net forward slash roots if you want to come play with us. Okay, Every couple of weeks we meet and practice and we learn tools on how to navigate stage number two. Okay, folks, hope this has been useful, and I look forward to chatting with you soon.